Great day if you're a Trojan, right? Uh, Sunday, bloody Sunday for Georgia. Uh, USC goes in, and uh, Lincoln Riley just has shown everything this offseason. He made it very clear. He says, very clear. We know we have an issue on defense. Everything we do going forward is going to address that to make uh, to give USC an elite defense. How do you do that? Well, you fix the coaching staff. He did that. What's next? Bring in the players. And uh, I think that USC made a huge splash yesterday. Uh, all great pickups. But the marquee one is anytime you go into Florida, you know, uh, Manchester, Florida, George, sorry, going to Georgia, Manchester, Georgia, pull out Justice Terry, uh, who was committed to Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs. And now he's going to be a Trojan. Uh, big defensive lineman, 6'5". 275, he's going to pack a lot of weight on. We know that uh, over this year and then one year in, in the system. Uh, he is a, a phenomenal guy, just huge motor. Uh, everybody, I mean, the, you name it, this is your five-star, your protocol five-star defensive lineman from the state of Georgia. Coach Henderson rolls in, says, let's go, and he decided to go. And really nicely, uh, perfect timing, just happened to happen when all these defensive linemen were on the, were on the campus this guy named Aaron Donald, and maybe you've heard of him, decided just to show up on campus and and give a glowing report of just how much uh, Henderson meant to him, not only him, but also the entire Rams defensive line, saying things like, I know as long as Coach Henny's here, uh, these guys will be disciplined, they'll be flying around, uh, they'll be making plays uh, and getting ready for, for the pros. So uh, if you listen to Justice Terry, if you listen to Isaiah Gibson, and uh, in, in, when they talk about why they're coming to USC in the past, we used to have a lot of guys, a lot of interest in USC. They come out, they get a nice trip out to Los Angeles, right? They talk about how beautiful the sunshine was, how beautiful the campus was, what a great school USC is. And the one thing you would never hear is how great the coaches are, right? All these guys gloat about the fact that they, they love the, the development that word. there's that word, the development development. Uh, it's been, it's been a theme for Lincoln Riley in the off season and both guys, use that word development and, and when they described why they wanted to come to USC they saw how they would fit in um Lynn's system and how uh coach Henderson is going to develop them into NFL players as we start to run down these individual players four aspects of this hit me about why this is so important for USC and why it is so Meaningful, impactful. Okay, number one is anytime you bring in recruits, regardless of their position, that have single numbers next to their names in their recruiting rankings, whether that's nationally or within their state or certainly at their position and nationally, that's a big deal because you're bringing in the very best. And yes, for those people that knock recruiting rankings, not all of them turn out, but it's a numbers game. The more you bring in, the more likely they will turn out because. The top of the board brings in the best talent. It's a numbers game. So when the skinny numbers are next to the players in question that you're recruiting and signing, eventually, hopefully that's the, the result of all this, signing them in December, then that's that's point number one. The, the evaluation of these players is ridiculously high. Uh, number two would be their position. So, hey, regardless of position, I'm sure Lincoln Riley wouldn't mind having the number one wide receiver, the number one running back. but these are defensive linemen. <laughs> These are defensive linemen, two of the top 20 in the nation, two of the top 20 players, not defensive linemen, two of the top 20 players in the nation going to USC as defensive linemen. So that's point number two, defensive linemen. Uh, point number three would be they play high school football in the state of Georgia, as you pointed out. Uh, to pluck these guys out of the state of Georgia, where Kirby Smart has been the best recruiter in college football for five or six years. And then point number four, not only did you get them out of Georgia, but one in particular, of course, Justice Terry, had already committed to Georgia, and you're able to turn his head and flip him around. That's all extremely significant to me. Yeah, and and if you want to break down the raw numbers... So the fact that they are all from Georgia. Well, so let's just say they also have Julian Lewis, right? The quarterback, the phenom quarterback. For some reason, all the apparently now he's not very good. Now that he's doubled down his commitment to USC, he keeps dropping in the rankings from some unknown reason. But we'll see. We'll see how that ends up. But um, currently, USC has the number 13, number 16, and number 17. All three of them from Georgia. All three of them uh, committed 
and committed early. Now the key is going to be is can you hang on to them? You don't sign kids in March, right? Uh, it's great that they're here. We've seen in the age of NIL, we've seen bags dropped up in Eugene. We've seen last minute switches for USC. We've had top linemen. The, the key here, the difference, I think, though, uh, when these national pundits say, well, remember, you know, this happened this year. They, they went back, you know, five, six years talking about it. But that's that's moronic because there's a completely different coaching staff here now. These guys listed the reason why they wanted to come to USC is not because it's sunny and, and going to the beach, right? And a beautiful uh, and education. On, they said, I want to go to the NFL. Uh, this guy, Henderson, is pretty good. He knows this guy, Aaron Donald, who gives him a, a glowing uh, report card. We want some of that. And um, those are the reasons why I think that these things are going to stick. Do they all stick? Who knows? But the fact is, you're laying up three, you know, four guys here. Uh, well, three guys. We'll, we'll get to uh, Hilton Stubbs next and Cordova. But you've got three guys here from Georgia. You know, th th think about this. They're the numbers. Let me see, look at. So according to 247, uh, Terry's the number two. Uh, no, sorry, number three player to state. Lewis is number five player to state. And Gibbs is number six player to state. All we've been hearing, you guys, about how USC can't land the top players from their own state. Well, that's that's three guys in the top six from Georgia. If they stick, USC just went in the backyard of the state, which is really the hot state now for recruiting. When you hear people talk about recruiting, they talk about Georgia recruiting. And USC walked right in there and plucked out three of their top six, half of the top six players in, in Georgia. And uh, there's one more thing you got to remember. Uh, you know, he's right now he's, he's basically a heavy lean to Georgia, but Elijah Griffin, who's the number one, uh, defensive lineman in the country, number seven nationally, and the number one player in the state of Georgia, there is some heavy conversation and interest, uh, from, uh, Elijah Griffin It's blowing up all, you know, everyone's talking about it, whether they can pull someone like Elijah Griffin, that's a whole nother story, but at least it USC is in the conversation. And I think a lot of that's got to do with how well you know, Griff is not the kind of guy that's going to commit early. I think this wasn't come down to the very end. And if USC can show uh, with their plays, bringing in rakes, right? Having Bear Alexander, who's from Georgia, you know, who, who played at Georgia, uh, you know, play well this year will go a long way if Lynn's system and their attacking system shows off these interior defensive linemen and shows that you can make a stance and, and the development under Henderson. Can Bear take another leap um, and be that top 10 draft pick in the NFL? Things like this are going to be the next step for USC as far as landing the elite players in the country. Justice Terry, but besides uh, the, the high recruiting ranking, of course, produced on the field, 78 tackles, 19 tackles for loss, 13 sacks in his junior season. Um, so highly productive despite I'm sure getting tons of attention and double teams and triple teams and whatever it might be and running away from him and doing all those things to, to try to limit a great player. Uh, next up on the board, Tim, we got Isaiah Gibson also along the defensive front only played four games this past season. So I don't know if he was nicked up. I didn't see anything on him uh, for this past year, but 15 tackles, five tackles for loss and two sacks for another players we see on the board there. 17th rated player in the country, not at his position, folks. 17th rated player in the country, uh, number one defensive lineman, number six. Um, and I'm trying to figure he's out. No one edge, no one edge rusher. Yeah, um, I was just gonna say. Uh, yeah, he's not the number one defensive lineman. He's he's, he's, yeah, he's more of an edge rusher. Lineman yeah. listed on two four seven sports, but that obviously doesn't make any sense because he's ranked below Terry overall. So he would have to be at another position on the yeah. End. Okay. Yeah, and, and he he's again another guy. You, when you have this really nice blend of size and bursts and and just speed and athleticism, uh, he's a guy that jumps off the page to you. Uh, Isaiah Gibson is, is the kind of difference maker on the outside. Now you, you're stacking the inside, and then uh, USC's done a great job. You know, you you have already at USC, you got um, Cam Fountain coming in. Just just um, if you've seen pictures, you guys, if you if you're on the internet and you're looking at the pictures. Cam Fountain is just a a monster, a monster man, but not just that. He is he is fast. He's mean. He plays with bad intentions, and he gets to the quarterback. So he's gonna be fun to watch. But also, um, the USC has a bunch of guys, you know, that that will be able to get there. And the more they stack, the more they add uh, with with depth, right? Because that's the key here, Mark. And you know about this playing in the in the Big Ten. 
these guys are it's gonna be a lot of run heavy it's gonna be a lot it's gonna be really physical in the trenches and as we always love to say in this show it, it, football is a violent sport of attrition and you need to have depth these positions so when you, when you have the quality which USC does have they absolutely have right now if you look at USC's roster they do have quality players but they're still lacking that depth up in the middle that's one piece probably going into the spring that are looked to probably add another defensive tackle to to the group they currently have but um I, i'm excited it's, it's with with henderson and with nua what they're gonna be able to put together on on the defensive line once what was once a weakness for usc uh, is clearly now with the size and strength they're putting into it uh, a huge thing remember they joked about last week um you had uh, lincoln riley joke about the fact that the defensive line gained 340 pounds as a unit so they, they put on this they put on a lot of weight in the offseason getting ready for a physical Big Ten schedule they're going to have and LSU and Notre Dame. I mean, think about the teams they're going to be playing, and they're bulking up. They're not going to be shoved around anymore, that's for sure. I wonder if any of our USC contingent here in the chat or others that watch our uh, live streams and videos on a regular basis have been trolling any Georgia shows because I'm just curious about their – I know it's just a, a burst. It's just three commits. They haven't signed, but still they're all out of the state of Georgia and they're three of the top six players in the state of Georgia. That's like, if I would have told you six months ago, USC is going to get commitments from three of the top six players in Georgia. Well, the, the thing is, is in, 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 Chris Chavino over at 247 Sports made a, made a good point. I was looking at last year, right? Last year, USC had a really good haul in Georgia. They, they got three-star DBS Ben, um, Lorenzo Cowan, uh, and then they got Cam Fountain, the, the young guy I'm talking about, uh, the, the defensive end that's going to be just, I think he's just going to be a monster. Um, and then also uh, Walter Matthews, tight end, four-star tight end, all out of the state of Georgia. And they they have been working Georgia really hard. I mean, it's been it has been emphasis. The the USC coaching staff, you know, has got a lot of crap for not getting the local talent from um, St. John Bosco and from um from modern day, but they have been doing a very good job of going into Texas and picking up running backs and linemen and linebackers. Um, so this is new football, you know what I mean? This is a new age. You can't you can't hang on to like George has already found with Bear Alexander with the transfer, you know, with the free transfer rule, right? And with the day and age of, of NIL, you can't stack four, five, six defensive linemen. That's what has been really nice in Alabama and Georgia have been able to do is th that's why they've been so successful, stacking these defensive lines, just like USC back under Pete Carroll. You know, you'd have you'd have all all covers player after all covers player just stacking behind each other. Those days are pretty much gone at Pierce. So there's so much talent in Georgia, Mark. You just, just like California, there's so much talent. You can't keep everybody home. No, you can't, but you want to keep the very best guys because mm -hmm. uh, if you look across the nation, yeah, Georgia has become so strong and challenging California and actually based on the last couple of recruiting classes uh, has outranked California in terms of depth of four and five star talent uh, that you'll see all over the place really strong programs taking the 30th and 40th ranked players out of the state of Georgia. But Georgia wants to hang on to these guys, the top five players in the state. So the next one up, and having just made a journey from Ohio to Florida, it reminded me that Jacksonville, Florida might as well be in Georgia anyway, so we might as well add to the theme there. It's only a couple miles from the state line. Uh, and USC, even though much of the attention is going to go to the two defensive linemen, of course, because the, the ranking is so high, a top 100 player, not a lot of those guys, uh, I guess roughly 100 of them, <laughs> but when you consider how many guys get signed every year, you're talking top 100 out of about 3,000 that'll get signed this year, top 10 at his position at safety, Hilton Stubbs out of Jacksonville, Florida, top uh, 15 player in the state of Florida. This guy's great. Uh, if you watch his film, he likes to get up there. He he, he likes to mix it up on the line. Uh, he's 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 only 180 pounds, but obviously you know he's he's only a junior, so he's gonna have time to, to his senior year to bulk up and then and then get into 
you know, have, have uh, Rachel Suba, you know, feed him right. And Benny Wiley, get him into the weight room. And so he, he will, you know, put on that size. That was a one knock I heard consistently from scouts about him. Uh, but when you watch him play, you certainly don't see that. Obviously he's playing high school talent. Um, but you, you will see him get up there and mix it up. He seems like he's got a you know, high motor. He seems to be around the ball quite a bit. Uh, he knows how to high point the ball, get to the ball at the right time. Uh, and often, you know, there when the ball arrives. So he's got a huge, uh, another theme they had, uh, in both, uh, on three and two, four sevens, they were talking about him. Um, you know, their scouts talking, they, they said that he, he has a great football IQ. You want those guys that know the game. And if you talk, if you listen to Lincoln Riley talking in the off season, he, he was talking about their install, right? The, the big thing is that Danton Lynn said, the reason why UCLA in such a short amount of time was able to pick up his, his scheme and be so effective last year is they had this slow install. But then Lincoln Riley kind of twisted that word slow and said it was a methodical install, meaning they knew what they wanted to get the guys to know, and they and they and they fed it to them, you know, like good teaching. They're teaching it to them step and layer at a time. They got those layers in for them. And when you have the words like you know a uh, baller, a uh, high football IQ, uh, the knock on him again is his size and maybe a little bit of his is flat out speed. But the guy is quick, and usually like, there's a lot of players out there that don't run four three forties, right, or four two forties like Taylor Mays. But there are a lot of guys out there that know how to get to the ball, can read a defense, can be in the right spot at the right time. And that often can mitigate maybe a little bit of size or a little bit of speed. But again, guy's only a junior in high school. He's only going to perform better as, as he matures. Um, and again, anytime you're picking up a top 100 pick from the SEC, we always, we're all supposed to bow and worship at the temple of SEC and Southern, and Southern athletes. This is a guy also from that, that uh, SEC footprint down in Jacksonville, Florida. So um, Florida's always been over the years, been really good to USC. And, uh, and, and I'm hoping again that it continues because we do need to go national. It just seems for whatever, I'm not calling out any particular schools. It just seems like some school, some of the schools locally here, the kids seem to like going after that big bag. And that's not what USC is all about. And as we see there, he doesn't shy away from contact and you can't playing safety. So even though he does need to bulk up for the next level, 97 tackles this past year, eight and a half tackles for loss, and uh, also factored into the passing game with six picks, six pass breakups, had a couple sacks there as well, two and a half to be exact, knocked the ball loose a couple times. So they obviously use a great athlete by him uh, playing in coverage, uh, playing in the backfield against the run, and then also bringing him on safety blitzes as well and he put up impressive numbers in 2022 so that's a sophomore season right there in a high uh, class of football in florida with 84 tackles yeah uh, there's production and then those the the, the past um, breakups and the interceptions just goes to prove my point that the guy has a nose for the ball um again the, the high football iq and uh, I again, just a great pickup. You're picking up a top 100 player from SEC foot, footprint, and um, just showing USC is is truly is truly on fire. I mean, the whole thing. He's from Florida, but you know, for a while USC has had SEC schools, especially Georgia and Alabama, coming in Southern California and and playing around our backyard. Right? I put a tweet out. You know, if if Kirby wants to play in Lincoln's backyard, maybe Riley's going to go ahead and, and repay the favor. And that really, if you look at what Mark has right there on the screen right now is a perfect example of, of just that. The one thing that's not up there right now um, that could be included is also the fact that they picked up uh, Dominic Kelly yesterday. He He's a, a 2026 um, commit, but he's a cornerback from Florida that the, that the staff is really high on. To be honest, I don't know a whole lot about him, but I will tell you, uh, if Doug Belk, so, so basically we picked up Doug Belk. Doug Belk's from the... From the uh, he was a GA under Saban, so he's kind of from that Saban tree. And Saban tried to hire Doug Belk on a couple of occasions. Uh, Belk obviously went on. If you look at USC staff, a lot of them took a step down to come to USC. And Lincoln Riley was very proud about the fact when he said that, you know, USC, we knew there were going to be a lot of interest in our jobs. He said, I had no idea how much interest there was going to be in these jobs until we started asking around. And so we weren't shy about going after top guys, regardless of what their current role was, whether it be a head coaching position, you know, a head coach or a coordinator, they were more than happy to move in and say, Hey, you know, we have these openings and, and they picked the guys with one thing in mind that was development. And as I said earlier, they've been pushing development. And as you can see from Sunday, kids are listening. 
And and I've said it often on the show and other shows that it's not all about NIL. A lot of these kids, the right kind of kids that you want to have on your squad, yes, of course they want NIL. Who doesn't want you know a six digit uh, payday? But at the same time, these kids know that the 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 bigger goal and which should be their bigger goal, the kind of guy you want to want to grind for an NFL career, and they know. And it's starting to show these guys want to go to the NFL, and they know that the the coaching staff at USC will get them there. And let's not forget another defensive line pickup out of Austin, Texas, and Gus Cordova. And you're not going to be wowed by his recruiting rankings, but there must be a reason why on this weekend of grabbing all this top flight talent from the state of Georgia that they go to Austin, Texas, and pick up uh, Cordova, who's at 6'3", 245. Uh, and um, again, the rankings aren't going to wow anyone, but he's going to be fighting for a job as well eventually. Yeah, well, it, remember, it is not always about just your your rankings. A lot of it has to go into also like maybe the 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 offers and who and who wants you, you know. And so you you look at you look at schools that um, sorry, you look at players. That have a long list of of uh, of of offers. If you look at Cordova, you're right; he's a three star. But I'm just scanning it's it's long, you know. Um, I mean, I'm not. I'll, I won't bore you guys with the smaller schools, but you know, you see, I see out here. I'll, I'll just name the the Big Ten SEC schools. I see, I see Arkansas, um, I see Kentucky, I see LSU, Maryland, Michigan on ACC, Miami, Michigan State, uh, NC State uh, in, in ACC, Nebraska. North Carolina, ACC, uh, Oklahoma, uh, Oregon. Uh, you see Pitt from the ACC, Purdue, Tennessee, Texas, Texas A and M, uh, Washington, and Wisconsin. So this guy has a huge offer list, uh, and uh, that might be the reason. It's not all about those numbers. That stuff. A lot of it has to go with the uh, players uh, going to camps and, and and the measurables and and whatever. But there's obviously something about this kid. Uh, I don't have a lot of film on him. I haven't seen a lot on him. But there's obviously something. If he's going to land that many offers, uh, there's something about him that interests uh, a lot of coaches out there. 